Chicken Mound. This is a ghost story passed down in the household of one Oshima Usuke. A man was raising chickens, but for two or three nights in a row, they cried out in the early hours of the morning. Greatly annoyed by their noise, he drowned them in the Izaki Sea. His children saw this and tried to save them afterwards, but the chickens were dead. They placed them near the back gate of a nearby coastal temple and returned home. That night, the chief priest of the temple had a dream. A person in yellow clothes, wearing a red crown, waddled over to him and said, I was raised in the Oshima household. I learnt that the cat was planning to do something terrible to the master, so I called out in the early hours to warn him. But unfortunately, I was drowned. What a fool I was. By the way, tomorrow is the mourning period for the Oshima household, so I think they will summon you. As such, I'd like to ask a favour of you. Please alert them to the cat's plans, and please tell them to be careful. As expected, the next morning the Oshima household called for the priest. He went right away, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary. When he was done reading the sutras, the family brought out their small dining table, and everyone sat around it. A red cat came running and jumped into the lap of the master's daughter. I think we should first examine this food carefully, the chief priest said. They looked and found a small green frog in the soup. They fed it to the family dog, who died instantly. The priest then told the family about the dream he had, and they killed the cat. Because the chicken was so loyal to its master, it was buried inside the temple grounds. Even now, you can still visit the chicken mound inside the temple. The Woman Buying Mochi In a certain village of Tosa province, a pregnant woman died of illness. Her husband clothed her in a thin kimono and then buried her. After that, each night a woman visited the local rice cake shop with a single silver coin to buy mochi. This went on for six nights, and on the seventh night, she brought a thin kimono. Please give me what this kimono is worth, she said, and exchanged it for mochi before leaving. The owner of the rice cake shop inspected the kimono the next morning. It was terribly dirty, so he washed it and hung it outside to dry. The husband of the deceased woman happened to pass by and, when he looked over, he saw the kimono that he had buried his wife in. Did they perhaps dig up her grave and steal it? He wondered. And when he inquired of the owner, he explained about the woman who visited his shop each night. Finding it strange, that night he waited for the woman's arrival at the rice cake shop. It was indeed his wife. He followed her to the graveyard, where she finally disappeared. His wife was gone, but the husband could hear something. Calming himself, he listened closer, and it was the faint sound of a baby crying. All the more suspicious, the husband dug up the mound and discovered his wife's corpse had given birth to a child, which she embraced on her lap. The husband took the child home and raised him. They say the child turned 18 or 19 during the first year of the Kambun era, where he was seen leaving for Osaka to become a boatman. Even though she had died, the woman was seen wandering through the streets in order to save her child. There is nothing more painful and heartrending than the love of a parent. Nekomata at the Play During spring of the eighth year of the Kansei era, the play Kyoga no Ko Musume Dojoji was performed at the Nakamuraza Theatre to rave reviews. Even those who didn't enjoy watching plays dragged themselves over to see it. Amongst those, a man named Hattori Ichidoemon from the town of Honjo Warigesui took five or six of his friends to the tea house he previously frequented attached to the theatre. During these times, even though I usually refrain from watching plays, even I have been unable to resist the rave reviews 
and found myself wishing to see it. It has been a while. Please prepare the usual food for us. And so they watched the play, and then afterwards retired to the tea house to relax and feast. Ichiroemon was particularly fond of the flounder coated in ankake sauce and gobbled up three of them himself. Please forward the bill to my estate, as usual, he said, and then got up to leave. A few days later, some workers went to visit the man's estate and were shocked. Ichiroemon had died seven years earlier. Come to think of it, the three flounder that Ichiroemon had consumed, he had consumed whole, head, bones and all. But that wasn't where the strangeness ended. There had long been rumours of a Nekomata in the Hattori estate. Perhaps this had been the Nekomata's work as well. There was little that could be done about it, and, in the end, the tea house was forced to absorb the loss themselves. Staged Robbery A man by the name of Wakabayashi Genemon sent a faithful servant to Nozaki village with three ryo to pay back a debt. The next morning, the servant was discovered tied to the guardrail of the Biwajima Bridge. He had been robbed of his undergarments, but as morning broke, he was freed of his restraints and entered a nearby shop. He was told someone would come from Nagoya to pick him up, and somehow he made it back. People began to whisper that he embezzled the funds and made it look like he was robbed, and it turned out that they were right. Before long, the servant was captured along with his wife and child and thrown into jail. In the following year of his imprisonment, the servant pleaded with his captors, Please, allow my wife and child to go free. I will die in their stead. The man stopped eating and then died of starvation. Afterwards, his spirit was seen wandering through the prison his wife and child were being held in. Numerous prisoners reported seeing him, and while there, the man's spirit made several attempts to grab his wife and child by the back of the neck or wrists to free them from the prison. Childbirth at the Flower Viewing It was the third month of the year, the time for flower viewings. Mount Asuka was bustling with life as the unveiling of the Prince Inari statue was also taking place, a number of visitors that was unseen in recent years. The weather was exceedingly fine and, amongst the men and women dressed in their finest to view the flowers, there was an extremely beautiful woman. She was around 23 or 24 years of age, and while her clothing and her jewellery were bewitching, regrettably, her stomach was swollen with the final stages of pregnancy. Her companion was another woman of equal age and beauty, and with them, two men close to 30, no doubt their husbands. These two couples set out a mat on a nice spot on Mount Asuka, laid out their flasks and lunch, and enjoyed the flowers. However, the woman with the swollen stomach suddenly went into labour. The pain was unbearable, and her bewildered companions rubbed her stomach, but the pain continued to grow worse. They panicked and suggested that they should move to a nearby tea house for the time being, but the woman couldn't take a single step. A curious crowd there for the flowers quickly gathered. The two men grew flustered. Luckily, they had passed a doctor with a medicine box further down the path, so they rushed at once to call upon him. She's about to give birth. Please, can you do something? The doctor, however, appeared to be extremely annoyed. Actually, I'm here secretly to view the flowers. Although I left the house under the guise of work, in reality, the box is empty. He opened the box, and the men saw it was full of sashimi, snacks, and other foods. Oh my, they said. We would love to raise a drink with you, but we've already finished everything we brought. What should we do? 
While this was taking place, the pregnant woman screamed and finally gave birth. What sat between her thighs was three caskets of sake. From the crowd of onlookers jumped forth a man with a shamisen, and he played in harmony with the pregnant woman's friend. The doctor began to sing, and the pregnant woman got up to dance. The crowd of onlookers were astounded. They had been deceived, but they had decided that this year's flower viewing was undoubtedly the best yet. <laughs>